sorry, should I be asking the questions first or do I need to like introduce myself? It's whatever works for you. Um, Alright, so I'm going to be asking um, some questions about uh, the new fourth wave feminism movement and how women are portrayed within social media and media. Okay, so do you think that women and teenage girls are portrayed in media in a nuanced way? No, they're portrayed in a ridiculous, stereotypical way. Uh, something happened with like some kind of convergence of amateur modelling and reality TV where girls started to do this thing whenever a camera's around where you do this weird thing where you turn to the side and do the thing with your legs and it's meant to look attractive and it's like that's insanity we've created some weird distorted version of what's um, what's meant to be hot or meant to look good that is silly it just feels silly it feels very unnuanced and really like I don't really know how we've got to that point. It's like in Victorian times when they used to take Victorian photos and everybody had to go mm -hmm. for 30 seconds. To yeah. be now, you, somebody gets the camera out in a nightclub and everybody goes, <laughs> and you don't have to lean in, you don't have to stay still, you don't have to do any of those things. They're absolutely insane. So no, I think the stereotypical representations are some kind of like lowest common denominator mixture of amateur modelling, Essex girl nonsense, reality TV, and just silliness, general silliness. No, we need to grow up. Okay. Well, okay, to follow on from that, do you think that women and girls enjoy the way that they're portrayed in media? No, how, how can you? It's all just a pressure to look something that you're not to look hot to get likes and all that kind of thing from people you don't even know or care about it's absolute nonsense i think i think it's just really silly and i don't know how to, i don't th the trouble is you can't uninvent it mm -hmm. so it's like you know the story of narcissus who fell in love with his own image in the lake and turned to stone yeah. it's like that it's like we've there's a great video that somebody took of people in nightclubs where they think they're having the photo taken but they're being videoed mm -hmm. and they all do this thing where they're like lean in and do the, you know, yeah. arrange themselves but when you see the video it's so silly and it's like wh why are we trying to distort ourselves into something that we think looks good okay. for somebody that we don't know to care about that we don't care we don't even care about it mm -hmm. it's absolute insanity I, I can't see how anybody can enjoy that and the trouble is, even if you do that thing where you do your leg thing and everybody goes, oh, yeah, you look hot, and then you think, oh, right, I've got to do this thing all the time, and now I'm, oh, what is that, because of my hair that day, I've got to wear that, you know, it's, honestly, think there's more important things in the world than mm -hmm. all of that. So, no, I think we've tied ourselves with knots with it. I don't think it's any better for blokes, either way. Okay. So, do you think that social media platforms have had any benefits to women's activist movements? <coughs> Excuse me. I think there is a benefit to having access to information. Mm -hmm. So, when you start looking at what's going on with protests in Iraq or whatever, and you know people are taking their head things off, and it's like you can see it, there is a benefit to that. Okay. And there's a benefit to not being for a state not being able to control people in the way that they used to, like in Russia now. We know now that Russian TV does what it's always done, the propaganda thing that lots of places do, except that things leak out now. And I think access to information is really important. So beyond the poncing about in outfits, I think there's something very helpful about people finding out things that matter and I think maybe as we move along we'll start filtering out the nonsense and get more in touch with like well that that looks good there why don't we do what they're doing or they seem to be more fair about how something's treated maybe we could do that I think that would be really helpful okay. all right and do you think that within this new wave of feminism it's become more difficult for men to understand their place in society? I do, but I don't think it's because of that. I'm not sure it's new. I'm not sure it's a new wave. I think it's just a wave, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that is about e equality and treating people right. And I think that's sort of basic human rights. And it does need 
to be worked on more some of the battles have been won but the, the you know the war is still going on mm -hmm. to get everything in the right place but I think blokes now don't quite know what to do with themselves in a way that is a little bit worse for them and that's where Andrew Tate steps in mm -hmm. you know so that very simplistic world where men feel disempowered because they can feel women are getting more empowered and that they're not I think that is an issue and I think that's where you know Donald Trump or Andrew Tate step in and go you don't feel very good do you well that's because we've given the power away to these people and they shouldn't have had it all you should have it all and it's easy trick to play but yep. I mean I don't know what the solution to it all is um, going off from that, do you think that gender should really have such a prominent place with how we view ourselves and others? I think it needs to go through a stage where it becomes important, like race did. You know, it's important to say you shouldn't choose who you employ by the colour of the skin or the gender or that kind of stuff. I think it is important. But I'd like to get to the stage, was it? Um, Halle Selassie, the emperor that the whole Rasta things kind of af came from, he said, until the colour of a person's skin is no more significant than the colour of their eyes, we will have that problem. So when you look at somebody, you don't think, oh, I don't like you because you've got blue eyes or green. Nobody, who cares? Or when you, you know, do you care whether somebody likes status quo or cold play? A bit, but not really that much. I mean, I think. It needs to be important, but it also needs to be, we need to get past it, because I think there's more interesting things to think about as in terms of being a human being, the best human being we can be. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just to end it on like... What do you think about that? Why did you ask that question? Um, because I think that when it comes to these issues, it becomes very light-sided. Um, where it's like us against them where in reality it's just you know we're all people and maybe if we didn't put these labels on top of us in the first place we wouldn't have anything to be fighting about um, in the sense that again it's a case of we invented gender people understand gender um, we can't get rid of it now you'll, you'll never be able to get rid of gender but if you um, lessen the importance of how people perceive gender, um, I think it would make a big difference to people's general self-confidence mm. and then therefore how we treat each other in the, the world itself. But like the toilet thing that we're ob obsessed by, a lot of Europe has unisex toilets, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just, but what's the deal? Just have a cubicle, go into it, do whatever you, you know. Well, why why are we so obsessed with that one or you have to do yeah. one or the other? So in America, they actually had a bill that they were trying to pass, which was an anti-discrimination law, and Republicans voted against it because they thought it was a ploy so that men could go into women's bathrooms mm. um, to commit. Mm. But that's the whole thing in Scotland at the moment, isn't mm. it? This week. It's um it's obviously a little bit of an outrageous point to make but that's why i mean if we bridge this gap between us we give less room to breed this hatred towards like anyone who identifies in any way because i just think it's a bit of a a ridiculous thing to hold such prominence over someone's pronouns gender or whatever over who they are as a person mm. right. um so given all of that what do you think would be a good direction or idea to give people a little bit more hope with this particular discussion because it does feel quite bleak sometimes yeah i mean for me it comes back to education it's like it there were there were people in my school when i was like nine or ten that i could tell weren't they weren't going to be academics some of the lads that i knocked around with then they were never going to carry on from school but most of them could take a motorbike to bits and put it back together again at the age of 13. If they could have, if somebody could have taken them down to the garage at the bottom of the field and said, put that together and you can ride it around the playground, they would have done that. And then they would have become mechanics. And that, I think, I think everybody's got their own potential, whatever gender or whatever they are. And if that was nurtured at the right time in education, I think we'd have a lot better planet to live on. So I don't, I don't I don't want to play down the gender thing because I think it's really important but I also think 
people's dreams are important and I think we give them up too easily mm-hmm. and we get too easily sent down oh your arts or oh, your sciences or oh, you, you you should do this if you like that everything's just too laid out and too prescriptive and I think if the, the solution to the binary thing is everybody gets the Nick is in a twist about the trans thing is it's complicated everybody wants something like left or right male or female simple I don't think things are that simple mm-hmm. I think our, like the nuance thing is the way forward to be more flexible more fluid and also if you don't like something that somebody else has done well you don't have to get on with your own life and just be kind to your friends and family leave it alone yeah and everybody just gets involved in everybody else's business when they're like you don't you don't have to mm. it doesn't concern you get on with your own life be happy peace <laughs> out <laughs> that's your advice be happy well just be as happy as you can be and be kind to the people that you care about and the people you don't agree with go Oh well, I don't agree with them, whatever. Fair enough. Stop killing each other. <laughs> that would be a big step forward. Right, for so. anything, there's absolutely no need. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you then. All righty, hope that's the kind of shout you wanted. <laughs> Bye. Is it over? <laughs>